So Hassan Piker was invited on Piers Morgan, uh, which was not a crossover anyone was asking for, frankly. I, I don't know how much <laughs> the him. two greatest thinkers of our <laughs> era. Uh, and uh, well, just why did Piers Morgan get Hassan Piker on? I mean, we're, we're not. I, I think I'm, I speak for us when I, I say we're not the greatest fans of the Piers Morgan show hosted by Piers Morgan with special guest Piers Morgan <coughs> because of the backed by Piers Morgan because of celebrated that, by Piers Morgan because of that problem. And um, he, he's he's a, a goof is is the best way I can put it, yeah. the most polite way of putting. It. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, well, he had he had he had Andrew Tate on a while back, and we did a segment about it yeah. where Piers Morgan utterly failed because Andrew Tate just asked him to explain what he meant. And Piers Morgan couldn't. And then he lost. And it's, it's amazing how bad he does in such situations. Which I... It's why... I, he lost with Mizzy as well. He didn't need... Mizzy made him look like an idiot. It's like, really? This little, like, latchkey kid? Well, you don't know what Mizzy was carrying. So <laughs> Piers was a bit nervous, I can understand. <laughs> I guess. But I, I come to you with the news that apparently there has been an opponent that has made Piers Morgan look good. Finally, which is because of Hassan's <laughs> own like, idiocy. This is like in wrestling when you've got a really weak wrestler and you want to make yeah. him look good, so you just throw some random weakling out and you just go yeah. squash him. Yeah. For, for anyone who doesn't watch wrestling, it's like in Star Trek when a new alien race turns up and they beat up Worf. Oh, yeah. It's like, that's what this is. Oh, poor Worf. Yeah. But before we get into the, the science, the Worf of internet <laughs> politics. I'm just going to mention something on the website being the ideal holiday, lads, how we do, which is this is where we sit around and have a bit more fun and have a bit more free form discussion than we can have on YouTube. It's a lot spicier than we can have on YouTube. It certainly is. And this is about your ideal holiday and of course special guest Lord Miles to get his take on that. So do go and enjoy it. It's on the Miles is really funny as well. He's a hell of a character. Mm. But let's get into the interview because this is the, the clip that went viral for people who don't like Hassan. I'm going to show the people who like Hassan what they have learned as well. And this is Hassan saying to everyone, um, I'm a propagandist. <laughs> which is a pretty... Weird debating strategy. Um, I suppose I'll just let him speak for himself. <laughs> I am not going to. I am not going to conclusively say that this was not. I don't Israel's expect you to. Fault. I Why? don't expect you to. Because I just gave you. Because I. And not because I'm a propagandist. As far as me being a propagandist goes, everyone is a propagandist. I'm just honest about it. You're a propagandist. We have our I'm biases. Curious who you think I'm I a am propagandist at least for? Honest about my bias. Who do you think I'm a propagandist for? Who do I think you're a propagandist yeah. for? Yeah. Whichever you're, every every media person is is doing propaganda. This yeah, but, is, who, this is but who for? I've got to be doing it for somebody. You think it's a bad word? I don't. That's just the difference. This, this is a I do. I think it's actually quite a serious charge. Hassan, I think it's a serious charge to level, not as a podcaster, but as a journalist who's broadcasting around the world, who has a reputation, I believe, for being fair and impartial, actually, on these issues. <coughs> it's quite a charge to just say, I'm a stenographer of the Israeli government or I'm a propagandist. I don't think there's any evidence I'm either of those things. I'm curious who you think I'm doing While the propaganda While we're having this conversation, 3,000... Piers, while we're having this back and forth, 3,840 Palestinians have been ruthlessly slaughtered mm -hmm. in the last incursion into Gaza. I feel like this is an incredibly selfish, self-centered conversation to have. You asked me to be on here. You wanted, you wanted to hear my perspective. I'm willing to give it to you. I don't want to talk about like whether the I don't want to talk about Noam Chomsky style manufacturing okay. consent conversations okay. about how the media is operating listen, in the I, in the, listen, uh, the behest of capitalism. You were the guy. Listen, I think you were the guy that called me. There are dead people. Listen, Hassan, I only asked you because you're the guy that called me a propagandist and called me a baboon in the suit. I was curious as to why you don't want to say I who, know, I'm, but, who I'm but doing I, the propaganda for. We'll move on. We'll move on. I agree with I you. Said, I said. <laughs> I just love it. That's amazing. It's two, it's two retards fighting. <laughs> but the thing it is, honestly, is Hassan's got the biggest open goal. Yeah, and he fumbles it. Who am I a propagandist for? Piers, your name is going. You're a propagandist for yourself, Piers. That's literally you. you literally behind you. Your yeah. name is on a reel. It's in just solid gold. Yeah. yeah it's just... <laughs> <laughs> right. Whoever, whoever is paying you, Piers, has a worldview that they want put out into the world that you are the mouthpiece for. That's what you say to that. I, I, yeah, I know, exactly. what, I, I know yeah. the interview. If you no, want to give a serious answer, you can say, well, the current military industrial complex backed by the yeah. people who I, pay I, you. I know, I know the interview that Hassan is referring to when he says the Noam Chomsky manufacturing consent yeah, yeah. thing, where he's speaking with it's maybe Andrew Marr, maybe somebody else, I forget the name, uh, but where he says, it, it, I don't normally like Noam Chomsky. He's a maniac. But this, he was right when he said to this person, and the guy goes, oh, who am I standing for? What makes you say I'm a propagandist? He says, well, 
if you weren't in favor of everything that the regime wants you to be, you wouldn't be sat here interviewing me right now. Yeah. That's the right answer to these yeah. sorts of things. But he, the, the both, of, bungles it. both of them are idiots. So yeah. this entire conversation goes nowhere. Specifically dealing with Piers, though, I think the correct answer and the truthful answer really is Piers is just for himself, which yeah. is fine. You know, he's uh, a personality, a brand, if we want to put it in those god awful terms that makes me want to throw up. But that's how people in London operate. And okay, whatever. But instead, Hassan decides to just completely fumble and make a complete moron of himself. But literally come out and say, yeah, I'm a propagandist. And Yeah, so- that's the double. He doesn't just, he, does, he, he could stab Piers and instead stabs himself. <laughs> <laughs> but also, like, I mean, I've, I've seen a bunch of clips of Hassan going around on Twitter of him just un- uncritically accepting Hamas's claims about, like, the hospital and things like that. And anything. It's like, yeah. Just anything, anything that confirms yeah. my anything, worldview is true. Whatever Hamas says is true and Israel is always lying. It's like, okay. I'm sure that's the case. And this, I, I'm just trying to avoid <laughs> being definitive on either side. Yeah, I because, don't know. <laughs> because, like, well, it's the, there's a war it's almost like I'm trying to going find the on truth. where both sides are going to try and portray anything that happens as it being it was these guys' fault. No, yeah. it was their fault. It was so. I'm just sat there going like, no, it's just a conflict in the Middle East. Yeah, I don't. as far as far as I'm concerned, yeah. I don't want to look stupid by tying my allegiance to either side. I'll let people who are experts in airstrikes figure out what and what isn't an airstrike, not me in my bedroom. And the very, the very least, I'll wait a couple of days until the actual evidence of it comes out. Yeah. But that's the clip that was shared by people who, who don't like Hassan. And, and for fairness, I'm going to show the clip that was shared by Hassan's um, supporters, which I got a lot of traction, but I, I'm not really sure why, because I, I wasn't really impressed with this either. <laughs> also, it's much shorter violence, for some violence, reason. Violence. Let it me is ask violence you this, required then. for its maintenance. Okay, listen. And that violence is frustrating people. I hear that you. That violence I is radicalizing you. people. But here's Hold my, on. I hear as you. far as Israel, as far as, as far as what Benjamin Netanyahu has done, as far as the war government, what they have done, peers, going into Gaza yeah. and bombing Gaza and killing 3,480 uh, Palestinians so far in Gaza, 1,000 plus children mm. out of all of those casualties, 22 hospitals being bombed, a bakery, the only remaining intact bakery, bakery. being bombed yesterday. Um, these are, these are horrifying crimes mm. that you would openly say are horrifying and, and unjustifiable bagels. when Russia does it. But when Israel does it, it, Israel has a right to defend itself. This is identical to the same talking points that I've heard from every Israeli administration official. It's the same talking points that I've heard from American politicians championing the, the exact same talking points. It's the same thing that I've heard from everyone else in the media. You might have been against the Iraq uh, war and, and you use that, but you're using that for, for evil, in my opinion, at this point. If you are not <laughs> sitting here and condemning those acts of war crimes, those acts of violence, the, those acts of collective punishment. <laughs> so that's the, the pro Hassan side, but I couldn't help but notice. You're using your opposition to the Iraq war for evil. Like, how? <laughs> so, but I love. Did did he just compare like the Russia Ukraine thing to Israel Palestine? Yeah. Uh, uh, anyone? When did Ukraine support, invade Russia? No, but anyone who supports Gaza, I, I really don't think they should be bringing up Russia Ukraine because yeah. one thing I did notice in Russian circles and Ukrainian language circles is that both of them sort of stopped fighting for five minutes once they saw the atrocities in this conflict and went, "Jesus Christ, <laughs> you guys are uncivilized as hell." It's like everyone was moaning about the various war crimes or whatever's yeah, yeah. happening in Russia and Ukraine. And then, and then, well, Gaza happened and everyone was like, oh, I forget what real brutality looks like. Yeah. So not a great idea. But his whole argument is just the, well, pro-Palestine line, which is, well, you bombed us. That's terrible. It's like, well, yeah. It's, it's a murdered war. families. Yeah. Kidnapped children. It's a collateral damage in a war. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I just, there was nothing there that made me think, oh, you know, he's come up with a good thought. It's literally not even his own thoughts. So, well, obviously, nothing Hassan thinks is his own thoughts. Yeah. I mean, not to mention, I'm just going to quickly go through because, of course, I mean, look, I don't want to get into the whole conflict, but I find this just boring. Like, I don't know why people who support uh, Gaza don't just, you know, own it because the whole thing of like, wow, there are dead kids on both sides. It's like, yeah, like you target children and Israel does like roof knocking, which is a, a whole weird situation. Where the dead kids are collateral damage, they're not something you want to do. Yeah. I mean, there's just a, a clip of this for people who are interested. So, what is roof knocking exactly? So, they send you a bomb and it hits your roof and it does a big bang. And then they give you a period of time to get the hell out. Okay. Because that's a warning. We are going to bomb this target. Right. So, then after some time has passed, you can see the smoke here and then it will disappear because uh, they have to skip forward. And then the building gets blown up by the IDF. 
It's not a huge period of time, though. No, there's a cut there. It's hard to see, but there's oh, right, a cut okay. uh, in the edit there right. where the smoke disappears. But the point being that... So, so how long is the period of time? It depends on the circumstance, is my understanding. So do the, could, do the people on, in the inside of these buildings, do they get a, an indication of what it's going to be? Or I don't know the circumstance. That's up that, to, that, that, is, that is still more than can be expected from a lot of other... Well, literally no one else on Earth does this. Yeah. We've never done this. No. The Americans don't do this. No. And we're trying to minimize our civilian casualties because we're trying to make ourselves look good. You know, killing loads of Iraqis is, is kind of awkward when you're trying to be the leaders of the free world. So you try not to do it. That's the argument. But I mean, the Israelis are doing stuff that no one else is doing. Mm. So just this, this whole idea that like, well, we're purposely targeting kids. I don't think they are. They just are killing kids by the result of their actions, which is bad. Don't get me wrong. Don't, don't like dead kids. But I know, breaking news. But getting back to Hassan, because he decided to um, carry on which is he decided to come out and openly say he is an idiot. <laughs> which I'm, I'm for. You know, I like self-improvement. So, <laughs> not, just my pers- not just my perspective on the matter. I'm just a you know, dumb idiot uh, with a Twitch stream who, who is live reacting to the news and trying to make sense of everything as it's ongoing. I usually have a policy of not covering breaking news. And, <laughs> and uh, sometimes that policy is violated. But uh, ultimately... I am not uh, held up by the same journalistic standards, even though I think I do a much better job than most other news outlets in uh, in general. What was that? <laughs> I'm a moron, but I'm still better than most of the media. But that, that, that was just a cavalcade of lies, right? I don't normally cover breaking news. That's all he does. You yeah. see his tweets, get in, we're talking about blah, 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 whatever's happening literally that day, right? Because what it's he does... Reaction content. Exactly. He gets up, he looks at a bunch of news sites, and then just reacts to whatever's happening through a communist lens. I thought most of what he does is he switches his camera on, points it at his chair, and then goes off and does other things while other people's YouTube videos play. That, that's, that's the kind of filler. Depends um, on how hard he's working. Oh, okay. That's, that's the hard work he's doing. But then for him to be like, yeah, well, I'm not hold, held up to the same journalistic standards. So, well, you're not reporting anything. You're literally <laughs> just reacting to the news. So why would you be? Though I think I do a much better job. How could you do a much better job? Because you don't do the job at all. You react to the job. And then the false modesty. Well, I'm just an idiot with a Twitch stream, but I'm way better than all of you guys. I mean, Hassan, nobody hates journalists as much as I do, but you're obviously not. I should have got the clip. There's this fantastic clip. I think it's the Liver King who's on H3's podcast, and Hassan is there as well. And the Liver King just goes off on one. That's a hell of a crossover. <laughs> well, he, just, he just starts bringing it up. He's like, man, I can't stand people who just react to stuff. Imagine, you know, if you, that's fine, but go do something as well. Uh, just people who sit around and react to things, and H3 and Hassan look at each other and then go, "Yeah, I hate those guys too." Am I right? <laughs> so that's because that's literally all you. Yeah. Do. Well, there was there, there were hilarious clips from earlier this year when H3 was getting really annoyed at people stealing content on Twitch, and Hassan's just sat there the whole time, like, "Oh God, please yeah, don't yeah, look my way." The little looking away meme. He went on here as well. Oh yeah. Which, um, he he says, "Yes, I am a propagandist, and that's why I just confirm my own bias." Uh, I'll quickly just play some of this, I suppose. But just, just very quickly, if if Hassan had anything interesting to say as commentary, I could forgive it all. Right? <laughs> I know, I really could. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, to if, be honest. Like, it, I really could. I could be like, yeah, okay, well, at least he makes a good point there, and that was insightful. But he doesn't. He He's an idiot, an actual, like, double-digit IQ moron. But it's interesting that you call me a propagandist, because I want to play you. This was your reaction to when the hospital... Got I'm bombed. a propagandist. Well, no, no, for the record, I'm, no, no. I'm not calling I'm you a that. I'm just, no, no. I'm just saying. I'm going to no, play I'm you. Saying, I'm saying I am. Okay. You just well, tweeted then, it out. No, I'm play, saying I am. I just want to even play it. Okay. I'm going to play the clip. This is your reaction <laughs> to the bombing of the hospital uh, the other night. While I was in the process of of getting ready for the stream, uh, Israel enacted uh, one of the singular worst strikes they have done thus far. And an airstrike, an Israeli airstrike, hit the Al Ahli Hospital in Gaza City, where thousands of civilians were seeking medical Bad treatment and jokes. shelter from the relentless bombing campaign. Now, interestingly, when that when you were saying that, uh, I was coming on air too, and I took a position uh, based probably on thirty years of being a journalist, including running major newspapers, working at CNN and others, uh, of waiting, of just saying, I think we should just wait and see what has actually happened here, get clarification, see who's actually to blame before we start passing judgment. You raced in to assume, as many people did, by the way, including the New York Times, BBC, mainstream media, uh, and of course, most of the Arab world uh, then followed, that this was clearly, uh, indisputably, an Israeli airstrike or mishospital. And yet all the evidence now 
suggests very strongly that it wasn't, that in fact this was a rocket that misfired coming from a, a, a terrorist go group inside Gaza. So my question for you is this. Why would, why would, you, I wouldn't be, go that far, why would you be so certain in, in what you said before you knew? Okay. So first and foremost, before we get started on this conversation, let's understand something very important here. There's no... Like- I can't be bothered. No, no, I want to know what his answer is. I right. really want to know what his answer is. It's literally just left us right away. Electricity in Gaza. Internet is patchy in Gaza. There's no food in Gaza. There's no water in Gaza. This is all by design. This is because Gaza is under a brutal blockade, a brutal occupation by the Israeli government. <coughs> okay? Justifies me so doing no that, it, that plays no, a role in the mind. fog of war and the misinformation that gets spread. Having said that, however, uh, you... Uh, you made it seem as though there is a certainty that this was uh, 100% not an Israeli airstrike. No, I didn't. I didn't. And instead, I literally just uh, said. I literally just said it, it's not a you, certainty. Okay, okay sorry. There, I said I, the evidence. Under- you made it seem like there was 100% certainty it wasn't Israeli. No, you said it was 100% certainty that it was. You absolute liar. And Pierce just said the evidence suggests. <laughs> yeah. I, we didn't know, I, so we waited. Video came out that it turns out it looks like it's a rocket that misfired. Blah blah blah. I mean, this this is the incredible thing about this interview. And I suppose unbelievable. I'll, I'll end this segment on this, which is that, uh, correctly as you point out, I don't think anyone hates journalists more than you. <laughs> and Piers Morgan is definitely on that list, mostly because of uh, I wouldn't call Piers Morgan a journalist. Well, recently it's, it's because of all of the the, the self obsession as well, which yeah. in this set, which is a whole other conversation. But and then his interviews he's done since he set up his show, he's done a terrible job because he's been owned by multiple guests who come on who just ask him basic questions. He's owned by a London street thug. <laughs> and, even a thug. and somehow Hassan has made himself look even worse because even Piers Morgan could stand over Hassan and be like, well, at least I have the ability to wait for the truth and just find out what the evidence suggests instead of just going, yes, I am a propagandist and I stand for whatever my bias thinks so. I kind and that's of, his worldview. I kind of admire the honesty. Like It's literally like a, an idiot just coming out and going, yeah, I'm, I'm just a propagandist. I'm totally lying to you. And I get paid for it. And Piers is like, yeah, but I wanted to have a dialogue. And he's like, no, there's no such thing. I mean, this, this is amazing, though, because it's that you get propagandists from like the pro-global American empire position, the anti-American empire position, let's say. But very rarely do they just come out and say, yeah, well, my life is basically worthless because all I do is say whatever I need to say. But this is how low IQ Hassan is, right? Because everyone else understands, no, you have to mask that behind plausible deniability, right? I, I, you know, everyone else, okay, well, I maybe I rushed to judgment, my mistake, I'll take that back. No, Hassan's like, I don't care that I lied, I'm a propagandist and I'm too low IQ to understand why that makes me look bad. Or maybe that says something about the audience he's garnered, which it is... The, absolutely. They will believe literally anything and then the exact opposite if he tells them to. Yes. Okay, what a cancerous community. If you appreciated that segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content that's on the site, such as the Epoch series, this episode on Pearl Harbor. If you'd like to find out what else is being put out, you can follow on Getter at lotuseaters underscore com on Getter. Thank you and goodbye.